Hello, my name is Cheryl Meyer, otherwise known as Cheryl M. Health Views, and I am a health coach. I want to welcome you to my podcast, It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health. This is a weekly show that will share lifestyle changes that you can make to support your health yourself. Why do I want to share this information with you? Seven years ago, after being a business owner for 20 years, I woke up one morning in horrific pain where every bone and every joint in my body hurt. I went to the doctor, she ran lots of tests, and then she ran some more, and then she ran some more, and finally she called me and announced she was gonna give me steroids, but there was absolutely nothing wrong with me and I should seek therapy. I knew something was wrong, I hurt. So she told me I would be on steroids for the rest of my life, and I refused that I was gonna have a life of pain and pills. So why was I gonna take steroids if there was nothing wrong with me? So I dug in and started researching, and I turned my business over to my staff. I found a functional doctor who confirmed that I had autoimmune disease by making a series of significant lifestyle changes that I could do for myself Five years later, I had returned to relative health. The best part is that I am now 70, and I I feel better now than I did when I was 50. I no longer hurt, which is huge. I will always have autoimmune disease, but losing the pain has been amazing. I went back to school at 67 and became a health coach because I want to share everything that I learned with others. And I wrote a book called It Feels Good to Feel Good, learn to eliminate toxins, reduce inflammation, and feel great again, as the manual I wish that I had had when I got sick, and my book has won 13 awards. So whether you want to future-proof your health and grow old with dignity and grace without dementia and chronic pain and disease, which you don't need to get, or whether or not you already have a chronic condition, like autoimmune disease or cancer or heart disease, and you wanna learn about what things you can do to improve your long-term health, or whether you wanna improve the health of your families and raise healthy children, because 53% of our children have a chronic condition, I look forward to sharing all this information with you. I will tell you, it truly does feel good to feel good, so let's get started. I look forward to having you join me here every week And I want to give you hope that if you have chronic pain or chronic disease, you can make changes that will improve your health. And if you don't want to go there, you're going to be fine if you listen to the show and put these things into work. I want to give you information so that you can grow old and have a better tomorrow. So thank you for joining me. Let's get started. Hello. Last week on my show, we were talking about 30 ways to save on healthy food, and we ran out of time when I got to number 15. So what I'd like to do to start off this week is go over the first 15 again, in case you missed last week's show, and then I will go through the final 15 so that we have 30 different ways to save on food. The first thing is that there's a new service available in this area called Imperfect Produce. And they call their fruit and their vegetables ugly fruit because they have little hiccups. They are perfectly healthy. They were just picked at the farm, but they're the things that can't be sold at grocery stores because they're not perfectly shaped. So they have a little dent in their side or maybe they have a little nobule on them. They're just a little bit different. And so Imperfect Produce goes to the farm and negotiates a great price with the farm, which is good for the farm because they get to sell the Imperfect Produce. It's good for food waste because Imperfect Produce buys it so less food is wasted. And it's good for us because we get to buy that produce at a reduced price, but it still has all the beautiful nutrition that an organic fruit or vegetable has just with a little hiccup. So my first tip is to go ahead and look up imperfect produce and to buy from them. 
The beauty of Imperfect Produce is they deliver to you. And nothing is better than getting up in the morning and opening up the door and finding a box of fresh fruits and vegetables to put away that you know you can use throughout your week in your cooking. And remember, I'm really encouraging you all to cook your meals so that you control what you put in your mouth. Because when you control what goes in your mouth, you eat much healthier than when you're eating out at restaurants or at fast food restaurants, which has nothing nutritious about it, or if you're eating prepared foods or processed foods. So the more you cook, the better off. And so Imperfect Produce gets you great fruits and vegetables at a lovely price delivered. <coughs> now, if you don't live in this area, there is another company called Misfits, and they're available all over the country, and they're doing exactly the same thing. And they're called Misfits because, again, they have little hiccups. They are not perfectly formed, but they are loaded with nutrients, and they are in season, and they are directly from the farm to you. And the interesting thing about Misfits is that if they cover a state, they'll deliver anywhere in the state, which I think is fantastic. Imperfect Produce only delivers at this point to the bigger cities, but Misfits, if they cover your area, will deliver anywhere in your state. Now, we don't have Misfits here in California, but there are Misfits in lots of states across the country. So the fact that you can buy organic at a reduced price do you really care if he's perfectly formed or not? I don't think so. What you're looking for is to eat for the nutrition, and both Imperfect Produce and Misfits do that. Okay, the next thing is we talked about farmer's markets and how important it is to go to your local market or markets because each farmer's market has different treats. They usually have produce, fruits and vegetables that are organic directly from the farm. You need to ask the farmer how he grew what he's selling so that you're sure it was not grown with herbicides and pesticides. But farmer's markets are great places to get healthy seasonal produce at an excellent price. And usually it's as close to the farm as we're going to find because it was picked the night before and then brought to the market. Now, there are some farmers like it, markets, like the one we have here in Monrovia, that have very little produce, but most farmers markets are loaded with produce. So that's where you want to go find all your goodies. And it's a great way to save money on what's being sold because it's in season. Next, there is something called CSAs, which are community supported agriculture programs. I know locally here in Pasadena, there's a CSA program, and most areas in the country have a CSA program. And it's wonderful because you get to contribute to the farm's operating expenses, and then you get a box of fresh fruits and vegetables. There's also CSAs for meat and chicken and eggs, and some farms and ranches are even doing CSAs that are exclusively animal-based um, foods. If you're going to buy animal-based foods, you want to make sure that they are pastured and that they're eating their natural diet. You don't want animals that have been eating GMO grains because you become what your animal eats and you want your animal to be happy and to be eating what he's supposed to eat, which means the cows should be eating grass, the chickens should be running around eating um, grass and fruits and bugs. The bugs actually make the chicken taste really good. If it's pork, you want him to be pasture pork, eating out in the field as well. And all sheep prefer to eat grass, so that's a great thing. So if you're going to get a CSA box, you still need to ask, what did that animal eat? Was it his natural diet or not? Because no matter what, you do not want genetically modified grains in your animal. Next up is you can join a local co-op. That's where you, they place bulk orders with organic suppliers and then split it up with all their members. So you get great organic produce at a reduced price because they're buying in bulk. So it's a great way to save money. If you have a Costco, they carry quite a bit of organic produce. So that's a great way to save. Trader Joe's has quite a bit of organic produce. So that's a great way to save. 
Now you can check actually with your local grocer. I know Kroger's, which is in Los Angeles, is Ralph's. They've made a commitment to carry quite a bit of organic. Um, our Albertsons has quite a bit of organic. So check out your local grocery store and see what they have in organic produce. Because a lot of times, your local grocer has really good prices on organic produce. And you wanna always buy in season. Remember how important that is because you're looking to get the best possible price. And if you're getting it in season, it's a thing with supply and demand. They're in the greatest supply, so the demand will allow you to get the best price for those items. You wanna purchase unpackaged. Whenever you purchase unpackaged, you get a better price. All that packaging costs money and labor. So you want to buy not wrapped up with plastic. Number one, you don't want your vegetables wrapped up with plastic, but you also don't want them packaged like three to a package or whatever, because that takes labor, so that's more expensive. You want to buy loose. And you want to buy unpackaged because if you're buying nuts or you're buying raisins um, or you're buying dried cherries or whatever it is that you're buying, if you're buying it from the bulk area of the store, you're not paying for the labor to package it, so it's at a better price. You can go to a farm and pick your own. I know that here in this area in Los Angeles, you can go to apple country and pick apples. You can go to pear country and pick pears. Um, there's all kinds of little farms that are within an hour or an hour and a half journey and it's a lot of fun to take your kids and go and pick and then you can freeze, you can can, you can do whatever to keep that so that you have it for a while into the winter and enjoy the lower price of going directly to the farm. Now what you're saving then is you're not paying for them to pick it and you're not paying for the transportation to bring it to market. So that's a big plus. Um, when I was a kid, we used to go pick strawberries. My mother used to freeze them whole in just a little bit of water, and we would have strawberries all year long in the winter and when I was living in Pennsylvania. So it was really a treat to go. It was a fun day to go with my mom, and it was fun to help her get them all lined up in the freezer in little containers so that we'd have them throughout the winter. When you're going out, you want to prioritize that organic dairy, bone broth, gelatin, lentils, bread, and wheat products are bought organic. Because if you prioritize those, then you're eliminating the things that have the majority of the glyphosate and the herbicides on them. So you're going to get um, a healthier product if you always prioritize that those things are organic. And you'll remember that I talked about the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. If it's on the dirty list, you only buy it organic. If it's on the clean 15, it doesn't matter. And if it's in the in-between, unless it's genetically modified, which is also noted on my website, you can go ahead and buy it non-organic. It's up to you. I choose to buy as much as possible organic because since I got autoimmune disease, my body can't handle the pesticides and the herbicides and they make me sick. But you get to choose I just want you to stay with the clean, with the dirty dozen being organic when you purchase them because they are really nasty with how many different neurotoxins and bee killing sprays they have on them. You really don't want to support that kind of produce in your family, in your body, or from the farm. You want them to be pushed towards offering you organic produce. One way you can save money is you don't need to eat the huge amounts of meat that we've become accustomed to eating. I eat about the size of a deck of cards at night when I'm eating my meat. Um, and I'm perfectly happy eating less meat and eating more vegetables. Three quarters of my plate is vegetables and then I have my little tiny piece of meat. The days of having your whole plate be a big slab of meat should be gone because if you're going to eat clean meat, he's going to be more expensive, but he's going to be worth it for your body. So if you limit how much meat you eat, you can afford to do that. Now, my husband is an O blood type, 
O blood types need more meat, so I feed him a larger piece of pastured meat. But for me, I'm perfectly happy having it be about the size of a deck of cards. You should have a vegetarian meal once or twice a week. That will also save you money. Where you're eating something that's just vegetarian and you're not eating meat at all. Um, by eating meatless meals, you will save more money to go into your entire food budget. And if you're not ready to do vegetarian completely, just do the smaller portions of meat that I discussed. But try things like stir fries. You can make stir fries without meat and eat it on rice or quinoa. Quinoa is a better choice. We should talk about rice for a minute because rice has a lot of arsenic in it. And what I learned this weekend while I'm writing my second book is that if, if you're going to eat rice, it should be brown rice because it's got the complete um, nucleus of the rice so it's healthier for you. And you should buy Californian rice because Californian rice has less arsenic. The most arsenic comes from rice that comes from Texas. Don't ask me why, but it is really heavy laden with arsenic and you certainly don't need arsenic. That's a heavy toxic metal that your body can't handle. So be careful about white rice, be careful about things made with white rice and buy Californian rice if at all possible. But quinoa is a great substitution for the rice. So if you make a stir fry and you eat it on quinoa, that's a great meal. Um, you could also make pasta without the meat, um, just with a nice tomato sauce or with a chunky vegetable tomato sauce. And believe it or not, vegetables also have protein, so you don't need to be eating meat at every meat. And you should always include, if you can handle it, one meal made with beans. Now, my husband and I are diabetic, so we do eat beans on occasion, but we pretty much avoid beans because they're high in carbohydrate. But if you're not diabetic, one meal a week with beans, they're high in protein and they're really good for your body. The other thing that I do like to do is make lentil soup because lentils are very high in protein and that's another great vegetarian meal. Um, I also like to make vegetarian soup, which is a vegetable broth with chopped up vegetables that are cooked in the soup. So that's another great vegetarian meal. Think about using coupons. This is number 15. Join your favorite company's social media pages for special coupons and deals. And look at organic coupon sites. Some examples are Mambo Sprouts, all natural savings and organic deals for organic food, natural living coupons, and they all have money saving ideas that you can use at the grocery store. And then there's your grocery store brands like Simply Organic. Um, they make spices, seasoning mix, and they often will offer coupons on their website or on Facebook. Kroger's, which is Ralph's in Los Angeles, but they're Kroger's in other areas of the country. They have coupons for their own brand called Simple Truth. Whole Foods has coupons every week for various products throughout their store, which is helpful. Um, Earth Fair has coupons for various products in their stores, and most stores will take each other's coupons. So when you get a coupon, ask when you're checking out whether or not they'll accept them. Shop the sales at your local grocery store especially if it carries organic. And then stock up when things go on sale so you can can dry, dry or freeze it. Um, if you're gonna buy canned goods, make sure that it's a BPA free can. BPA is the lining on the inside of the can and it will tell you if it's BPA free. You don't need the BPA lining because it's an endocrine disruptor, which is why our little girls are maturing so much early and why we're worried about our little boys having enough sperm count to be able to have children by the time they become older. I was gonna say my age, but I'm past my child rearing years. 
rarely eat out. This is tip number 17, because if you're going to be eating out, you're going to be spending a lot more money than you would be spending if you were cooking in your own house. So if we're talking turf and surf with a glass of wine, you're probably getting up there towards almost $100 per meal. Save that money and use it to cook and control what you're cooking so that you're only putting nutrition into your mouth. It's really important. So you don't want to be spending a lot of money out and that's where you can save money to be buying your organic vegetables and potatoes and strawberries, etc. Rarely drink out. What I recommend is that if you have friends that like to go out and you don't want to miss out on socializing, start a dinner club and go from home to home. One week it'll be at your house, the next week it'll be at a different friend's house. You can either cook the entire meal with your dinner club or you can all bring a dish and make it more like a potluck. That way you still get to enjoy the company of your friends, but you don't spend all the money of eating out with them every week. And that will save a lot of money. And it will also save on alcohol. Instead of buying drinks at a bar or in a restaurant, use that money to buy yourself a really nice bottle of organic wine for you and your friends. Wine is one of the most sprayed crops. So you don't want to just be drinking any wine, you want organic wine, because again, you don't want all those herbicides and pesticides in your body, and you can get a really good bottle of wine for a fraction of the cost if you're buying it to serve it to your friends at your house instead of buying it and drinking it out in a restaurant or a bar. Um, same thing with coffee. Make your coffee in the morning before you head out for work. I bought a carafe that will keep coffee warm for 12 hours. So I make my coffee in the morning, which is organic because again, coffee is a heavily sprayed crop and I don't want all of those toxins in my body. So my favorite brand right now is Majorca and I get their Cubano. It's a nice, deep, robust, dark coffee. And then I put it in my carafe and I leave the lid off for a little while so it starts to cool down so that I don't burn myself when I do start to drink it. And then I take it with me to work. That saves the, what, $4 that you're spending for a cup of coffee in the morning at one of the local coffee companies. You can save all that money and use it to buy something nutritious for your body. Take your lunch to work for you, with you. This will save you a ton of money. My favorite thing when I'm traveling is to get a large bell jar and make a salad in the bell jar um, with all different vegetables all the way up, all organic, really colorful and really yummy, beautiful vegetables. And then I take my salad dressing separately made from real olive oil, probably Californian because if it's Californian, Again, it's not being cut by the mafia who's cutting our good olive oils from Europe with other vegetable oils. So I know it's olive oil if I'm buying California olive oil. If you do really want to buy a Spanish or an Italian olive oil, and they are delightful, make sure that it's one that says it's certified on the label because that way you know you're getting something that's been traced from the tree to the bottle and it's not been cut with all of the GMO vegetable oils, which is what you don't want to use. So I make this big bell jar. I take, um, I actually take a glass bowl with me when I'm going to have a salad at work. And I put my vegetables from my bell jar into my big glass jar and my glass bowl. And then I do my own salad dressings. So I use either um, red wine vinegar or Bragg's um, apple cider vinegar or lemon. When my lemon tree is in um, season, I get lots of great big juicy lemons. So that's what I eat for lunch generally when I'm taking my own lunch. But you could also make your own sandwich using Applegate. 
as your cold cuts because Applegate is particularly clean and you can buy organic ham and organic turkey and organic chicken cold cuts that don't have all the crud in them that other cold cuts have in them. And then make your own sandwich and take it with an organic tomato on it. You can pack your tomatoes separately so that it doesn't make your salad soggy. But you can go out to eat with your friends and eat your own lunch. It's about your health, so I don't want you to be shy and I want you to do whatever it takes for you to eat as well as you possibly can because it's worth it. Remove all the sugar that you can from your diet. Um, my husband and I use stevia and when possible, we use the ground up green leaf stevia that is by Mayan that we buy on Amazon because then nothing's been added to it like dextrose, which is a sugar, which you don't want. Um, it's just pure stevia. We also do use the Trader Joe's stevia drops. They're in alcohol, and I understand that's not as healthy as using the actual ground green leaf, but at least there's nothing else in it from Trader Joe's. It's just drops of stevia and alcohol. So that's what we use for sweet. It's also what, um, I do use a little bit of sugar when I cook. My next show is going to be on use this, not that. But remember that if you remove sugar from your diet, you're also eliminating a lot of the junk that you're buying at the grocery store that's processed. And it's so much better for you. And sugar causes disease. It plays havoc on every organ in your body. So eliminate as much sugar as you can. And I will warn you, when you first try to get off of sugar, it's an addiction that is as strong as cocaine. So expect yourself to go through a detoxing. You wanna drink filtered water. So you wanna get yourself some stainless steel water bottles. You wanna put a filter at least on your kitchen sink. We now have put filters on our entire health system, and the filter that we chose is by Aquasana. Um, you get it put onto your entire house or onto your kitchen sink, and then that's the water that you drink. If you're drinking water out of plastic water bottles, you're getting like a triple whammy of toxins. Number one, you're getting all the toxins that came out of your faucet that wasn't filtered, which can include pharmaceuticals and all the glyphosate that's gone down into the groundwater, and it's got atrazine in it, which is a really nasty chemical. You need to get a water to, um, report from your water department and see exactly what's in your water. I'm really care um, lucky because I live in Arcadia and Arcadia drinks water from their own artesian wells. But even at that, there were some trace elements of things that I didn't want in my drinking water. So we filtered our kitchen sink first and then about a year later we filtered the whole house because what's your biggest organ? Your biggest organ is your skin. And by taking showers in the unfiltered water and taking baths, which is one of my true delights at the end of the day, in unfiltered water, I was still getting the toxins through my skin. So you want to drink filtered water. Now, why is it a triple threat if you're drinking it out of plastic water bottles? Because not only are you getting the toxins that came out of your tap, but you're getting the toxins that are in the plastic that are leaching into the water. You're paying 1,200 times more for the water in a plastic water bottle and you're getting the added advantage of toxins because the water in the plastic water bottles is even less regulated than what comes out of your tap. I found that appalling. And then in addition to that, the third area way that you're getting toxins is that little plastic bottle is letting little tiny microbes of plastic get into the water that are floating around and then going into your body. So buy yourself a stainless steel water bottle they're $20. I, again, bought mine originally from Aquasana. You can carry this with you everywhere you go. It is made out of stainless steel, so it is toxin-free. And so this is how you get your water. If I'm going to be gone too long to have one bottle of water do the trick for me, I have bought large stainless jugs that I keep in my car. The beauty of carrying water in stainless 
if it keeps it cool all day long. And that way you are never caught in a situation where you don't have water, you just fill up your own stainless steel water bottle, only it's with the water that you trust that's coming out of your own system. It'll save you a ton of money too. 1,200 times more is how much you're spending for water in plastic bottles. Stop buying sodas. Now, sodas are gut rot. If you look at what sodas are really good for, it'll polish the chrome on the bumper of your car. You really don't want that in your gut. It is loaded with sugar, so it's causing all kinds of havoc on your body, and it really, its redeeming value is nothing that you want to have in your body. You can clean your kitchen floors with it, you can do a lot with it, but you don't want to drink it. So what do I do instead? I have bought large half gallon glass bottles from Amazon and in the morning I put my filtered water in and then I fill them up with different kinds of fruit, whatever's in season. It might be as simple as cucumber and lemon. It might be berries which are low in calories and yummy and they infuse water really well. It might be peaches when peaches are in season, but whatever it is, that's what you drink through the day. So you go in and you take your water that's now infused itself with all of those yummy fruits and you drink your water from there, which takes the place of whatever Coke or soda you've been drinking, which is not good for you. When you're traveling, I want you to take your own food with you on trips. Now, that means a couple of different things. If you're traveling in a car, we actually bought a little tiny refrigerator on Amazon and we keep whatever needs to stay cold in the little refrigerator, which plugs right into the car. If I'm getting on an airplane and I wanna take some of my own food, I take one of the insulated bags. I have dry ice that are encased that something frozen has come, and come with, and I keep those in my freezer all the time. So I put those in my insulated bag with whatever I wanna keep cold, and I will check it. It travels just great, or if it's small, I will carry it onto the plane. So I take my own food with me, and I plan ahead so that wherever I'm flying to, I know where the closest Sprouts or Whole Foods or organic grocer is, and I go make a stop there before I go to my hotel. And I have arranged ahead of time to have a little refrigerator in the room, in the hotel room that I have rented, so that I take my own food with me. This saves a ton of money. If I can, I stay in a residence inn because then I also have a little mini kitchen and that saves me money. Make your own snacks. Instead of paying the extra prices to purchase organic healthy snacks, really junk food is kind of junk food, whether it's organic junk food or it's regular junk food. So make your own snacks. You can make your own granola bars. I always travel with nuts because they're a great source of protein. I, I actually travel with an emergency pack. And what's in my emergency pack? A couple of apples, almost always, maybe some other kind of fruit. Nuts are always in my emergency pack. And um, I usually, if I'm gonna be gone any length of time, will carry a can of wild caught salmon. Just be careful when you open it up. I want to spray that oil all over me and I smell like cat food on an airplane. So just be careful when you do that. But you can, there's a lot of things that you can travel with or keep on yourself so that you're never too hungry and you make bad decisions about what goes into your body. Stop buying junk food in general. Cut the junk food out. The junk food's a lot of empty calories and it's really not good for your body. And you'd be surprised to see how much you're actually paying for soda and crackers and cookies and stuff, prepackaged meals and processed foods. It's a great way to save money so that you can buy high quality organic food. By skipping the processed and unhealthy foods, you can spend a lot more of your budget on the higher quality healthy foods. Even if junk food is certified organic, non-GMO and gluten-free, it's probably relatively empty calories. So the smart money is not on buying them at all. So nut butters, you can buy nut butters in little packets that are organic. 
They're great on a piece of fruit like an apple as a snack that it gives you a little protein and it's a lovely snack while you're out and about. Um, and it cuts out all the sugar and the bad fats and the fillers and the pre preservatives. You can make your own kale chips. If you've never done it, you bake them on a really low heat. It's just like making kale salad. And I, kale was something I never ate before I got autoimmune disease, but I really like kale now. And the key to enjoying kale is to massage it. So you put kale into a bowl. I have a girlfriend who says, hey, I'm looking for someone to massage me. I'm not in the mood to massage my kale. But nevertheless, you put the kale into your bowl and then you massage it. You break down the outer layer of the kale that's bitter and you massage it with olive oil, garlic powder, onion powder, and preferably lemon. But if lemons aren't in season and they're too expensive, then I use my Bragg's organic apple cider vinegar. And then you just walk away and let it sit because it will take that bitter taste out of it. Now, once you have that done, you can either eat it as a salad and I'd add onions to it and probably a tomato to make salad out of it. Or you take that and you spread it out on cookie sheets and you bake it low until they become nice and crispy. Kale chips are yummy and you will enjoy them a lot. So get in the habit of eating that instead of potato chips. You can also make your own organic popcorn and you can buy popcorn organic. There's a company called Quinn's that sells organic popcorn. Those are much healthier snacks for you to buy than most of the what's available. If you need a cookie, bake your own. There is a woman out there that has cookbooks called Danielle Walker, and you can just Google for her um, real deal chocolate chip cookie recipe. I swear to God, they taste just like my mother's Toll House cookies. They are yummy and I use um, a non-soy chocolate chip so that I don't even get anything GMO in my chocolate. So that's a yummy way to have a cookie. She also has a great recipe you can Google and find online. Her last name is Walker. Well, you know, there's a famous Walker shortbread. Well, you can Google for her Walker shortbread recipe for cookies, and they're pretty darn good too. They're made with ghee instead of butter which means the milk solids have been taken out and ghee is organic. So you're getting a much healthier cookie that's low in sugar, but quite delicious. And then you can make your own gummies um, and they're actually quite good for you. You can buy little bear gummy molds or you can buy other shapes, but make your own gummies because then they're gonna be less sugar and much healthier. Tip number 26 freeze your leftovers so you get a second meal out of them using again inexpensive mason jars or silicone ice molds for smaller portions that way you don't have any food waste and if you get in the habit of freezing your leftovers you get another meal out of the deal which saves you because you're getting two for one number 27 look for grocery store owned brands they're going to be cheaper than branded brands Target has a brand called Simply Balanced. Giant Stores have a brand called Nature's Promise. Bonds and Safeway have their own brand. Trader Joe's has organic under their own store name. Aldi's, which is the same parent company as Trader Joe, has Simply Nature. Costco has Kirkland Signature. And Wegmans also has Wegmans Organic. But the same rules apply always read the labels. Don't just take somebody's word for it that it's gonna be healthy for you. Learn to read the labels. And you wanna make sure that sugar's not the first ingredient, for goodness sakes. You wanna make sure that whatever the organic thing is that's inside that canned good is the number one ingredient. And the rule is kind of that if it has more than five ingredients, you don't want it. But if they're all five really good ingredients, then I would go ahead and buy it. Again, remember, no BPA. And all Sprouts canned goods, by the way, are BPA free. They made a commitment that if anything was going under their brand name, it was gonna be BPA free. Most Whole Foods is BPA free. It'll say so on the can. 
Tip number 28, start your own garden. This has many advantages. Number one, you can grow your own tomatoes, you can grow your own vegetables, and if you have children, you can have them be involved with growing their own food, which is delightful because then the child will take real delight in eating a vegetable that they actually helped tend the garden for and that they had a part in growing. So that's important. You can also do a vertical or a container garden on your patio. You can grow herbs on your windowsills. And the best seeds to look for are heirloom seeds. They're organic and non-GMO, and it's very rewarding to grow your own herbs and vegetables. And by the way, Iceland has actually stored away heirloom seeds of every, of every variety in a place that's secret because they're afraid we're gonna come to a time when they're not available. And so they have taken future generations into account by keeping seeds set aside in case they're ever needed so that we can grow our own food again. If you can't get organic where you are in the winter, there is a company that you can buy organic produce from and they will ship it to you called Asia Standard. This is something that I just find. It's Asia, A-Z-U-R-E, standard, S-T-A-N-D-A-R-D.com, all one word. They have um, fruits and vegetables and you can also buy organic frozen fruits or vegetables at your local grocer. If you can't get quality meat during the winter, I use a company called Wellness Meats in Missouri. They run sales, so stock up when their sales meats are on sale, and they ship in frozen food packs, and if you buy a certain amount, they ship for free. So start off on their website, Wellness Meats. You start off by looking at what cuts are on sale at that point in time, and that's what you stock up on when you buy them and then you keep it in the freezer so that you have it on hand. Um, where we have our second home in Sedona, we also have a rancher who is very picky about what he feeds his cows. And so we buy ahead of time from him and keep that in our freezer so that we have it in the winter months when his meats are not as readily available. Other places to shop for less online. There is a membership grocery store called Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E. You pay $45 for the year and then you pay 25% less for everything you buy online. And again, if you buy a certain amount, they ship to you for free. So it's really fun that you don't have to go show grocery shopping. It's the ultimate in laziness, but I love it. I save money and they ship it to me so that all I have to do is unpack it when it arrives. I buy most of my dry goods from Thrive because I save quite a bit of money and I place like two orders a month with them. Vitacost also can help you save on healthy and organic foods. That's V-I-T-A-C-O-S-T, -S all one word. Check out prices on Amazon because they have organic things that are less and they deliver. True Foods Markets. Now, I have not shopped here, but it has been recommended to me by some friends on the East Coast, and that's all one word, True Foods, with an S, T-R-U-E-F-O-O-D-S, market.com, where you can buy healthier food for less. Organic Kingdom, another one that I have not personally used, but that's organickingdom.com, where you can buy goods to be shipped to you that are organic and then of course all the regular grocery stores and remember to look for their coupons some last thoughts always use your dirty dozen clean 15 card and always carry around what is genetically modified on a card with you because you really want to be sure that you're not having something that has bt toxin bred right in it or that has been drowned in glyphosate so that will save you and your body um, poison and then buy in season buy on sale cook and freeze it that lets you eat organic at the best possible price 
Um, and when I married John four years ago, we suddenly had two refrigerators, so we keep one out on our patio so that we have extra storage space, at least in the freezer, when I want to freeze extra things to have them on hand so that we have that availability. Um, you can also freeze blueberries, which actually breaks down the skin of the blueberry and makes it easier for you to get the beautiful nutrition that that berry has to offer your body. You can also freeze peaches, spinach, kale, green beans, and more. If it's hard to get produce in the winter in your area of the country, eat organic frozen food or organic canned produce. BPA-free cans are important and Whole Foods has headed that direction as well. So read the labels and make sure that you're getting the best possible food to put into your body and the bodies of your family. Learn to make your own convenience foods from scratch. You can make your own granola bars, you can make your own granola, um, you can make Daniel Walker's chocolate chip cookies and shortbread cookies. You can make great coconut macaroons that are healthy. Um, and that way you also get to eliminate MSG, which is now under 29 different names that you probably don't know that are MSG on your processed food. How do I find recipes? Well, I'm gonna talk about that more at length when we get to use this and not that in next week's show, but I Google for paleo recipes. Paleo means that I'm gonna eat like my ancestors did back in the paleo days. And if I Google for paleo recipes, they're pretty clean to start out. And then I use my use this, not that exchange list. But start with a paleo recipe and cook using that. So you don't need to buy a whole lot of cookbooks and then not remember where, which recipe is in what book. You can just Google for a healthy recipe and you will get all kinds of possibilities to make your dinner that night using whatever the meat is that you've taken out of the refrigerator. It's important for you to garden if you have children because it's important for your children to know where their food comes from. There was a survey done by the Washington Post that I mentioned this last week where most children think chocolate milk comes from chocolate cows because they really don't have a clue where their food comes from. By gardening with your child or by going to the farm and picking food with your child, they'll have a much better understanding of where their food comes from, which is super important. And before you go grocery shopping, sketch out your meal plan. This way, you buy what you need and what you intend to use, and you reduce food waste, which is a big way to save money. We waste a lot of food in this country. They'll tell you that non-organic food can feed the world, but they're not doing it to feed the world, and we're not feeding the world with the conventional crops. And there was a study just recently done at Berkeley that we could actually feed the world with organic produce if we just stopped wasting so much of it. So remember to be cognizant, buy what you need, buy what you're gonna use, and plan it out a little bit ahead of time because that too will save you a lot of money. Remember, we wanna eat nutritious, delicious, and nothing suspicious. I'm always gonna have autoimmune disease, but by eating this way and making sure I limit additional toxins going into my body, that means that I eat much healthier. So those are all my ways to save money to so you can buy healthy food. We have a little bit of time left in this hour, so what I wanna do is talk about what are the triggers for inflammation. A lot of people think that inflammation and chronic illness comes because somebody in your family gave it to you and you and inherited a genetic disposition to get that disease. And that is only part of the story. You have the ability to turn that switch on or leave it off. They're discovering that there's in a new whole field called epigenetics that you control the environment. So whether or not you got the genetic predisposition to get that disease or not, does not mean that you have to get it. So let's talk about what you do get it from. You wanna create an environment 
where you're eating lots of healthy organic vegetables because all of the nutrition is going to protect your body from getting a chronic illness. So that's number one. You want to make sure that you know what your food sensitivities are. Now a conventional doctor is probably only going to test you for allergies. An allergy is something like a peanut. You eat it, bam, you react right away and it can kill you. But there's something called a sensitivity. I have 16 of them. A sensitivity is something that you eat and it starts a slow burn. And that slow burn starts to do damage in your body. And the place where it does the most damage is in your gut. And leaky gut is the precursor of chronic illness. So let's talk about what causes leaky gut. Food sensitivities are part of it. Toxins. Toxins are in our food, our cosmetics. Stress is a big causer of leaky gut. Anxious negative thoughts, which is anxiety, is a big cause of leaky gut. But there's also toxins in our water, which we just talked about, in our air. And we also can have a toxic lack of sleep. So toxic relationships and toxic lack of movement. All of those things contribute to your food not being digested properly in your gut. And when your food is not properly digested, it's in too big of a chunk to go through to your bloodstream. So what it does is it starts pushing up against the wall of your gut. Now the wall of your gut is only one cell thick. I found that totally amazing. And it replenishes itself every seven days. But if you have these large particles constantly pressing up against that one cell thick wall, eventually your body can't keep up with it and it rips a little hole in it, which is where leaky gut comes from. And eventually that little rip gets bigger and bigger and more and more. And then things that are not properly digested start going through to your bloodstream that are loaded with the toxins that we've talked about. And your body does exactly what it was supposed to do. It screams foreigner and it starts to attack it. And then what's interesting about the human body is it mimics wherever you're weak. So that when your body starts attacking that food particle that isn't unidentifiable because it hasn't been digested to the right size, then it starts to attack wherever you're weak. I got autoimmune disease because it was attacking my muscles and my bones. For someone else, it might attack your thyroid. For someone else, it might attack your lower gut. For someone else, it might attack your brain and become start to become dementia. Or for someone else, it might attack your skin and become eczema, psoriasis, or even acne. So it's important that you eliminate all of these toxins so that you continue to properly digest your food and your gut remains healed and whole so that your body doesn't attack itself. Chemicals are another reason why we can turn the switch on or off. There are 80,000 different chemicals in our environment and there are 1,700 more chemicals all the time. So the process for approval takes less than three weeks when a new chemical is, is created. And so, trust me, they are being approved as something called GRAS, G-R-A-S, generally considered to be safe, but they've not been tested. And so these chemicals are continually going into our environment, our cleaning supplies, our shampoos, our cosmetics. And so you wanna be very diligent to be very picky about what products you use because what you want to do is keep your toxic load down so that you don't have a tip over the tipping point into illness, which is what happened to me. Now, I did have lots of signs along the way that I was getting sick and I just didn't pay attention to them. So go into your body and ask it how it's feeling. And if it's not feeling so good, Try to figure out what it was that you did or ate or were around that was making you not feel good. Um, the first thing that started to bother me was perfume. I couldn't stand being around the scents. And ended up, all those perfumes were very toxic. The next thing that started to bother me was my mascara. Some of them made my eyes itchy. Some of them made my eyes water. 
The next thing that bothered me was my underarm deodorant. They either made me blister or they made me rash. And then fabric softener bothered me and I woke up one morning, we had just used a new fabric softener and my tongue and my lips and my eyes were almost swollen shut. My body was telling me that my toxic load was building. So that's when that switch gets starts to get turned on so that you get chronic illness. And what am I referring to as chronic illness? I am referring to all the autoimmune diseases, no matter which one it is that they're called. It's one big umbrella of chronic illness if you get an autoimmune disease. It's also one of the contributing factors to cancer and it's a contributing factor to heart disease. So eliminating all these chemicals is very important and you don't want your toxic load to tip over the top. And then finally, whether or not you are tolerant of gluten or not, you should pay attention whether you're eating gluten and it's bothering your body because it can be a contributor to leaky gut. Sugar, alcohol, caffeine, genetically modified, Foods and Roundup are all contributors to leaky gut. Heavy toxic metals are contributors to leaky gut. Radiation is a contributor to leaky gut and then stress. And go back to the first or second show where I actually show you a series of stress exercises. I think it was the second show in this series because keeping your stress below a chronic level is critical for your long-term health health. Again, stress impacts every organ in your body. So find ways to reduce your stress. If it's even just doing the Dr. Andrew Weil 478 breathing exercise, which you can Google and see him doing it on YouTube and learn to do it that way. It's a simple count. It takes three minutes to do a round of four and it resets your parasympathetic nervous system, which releases all of the stress that's building up to a chronic state in your body. So that's the show for today. Next week, we're gonna talk about how I cook. We're not gonna talk recipes, but we're gonna talk about how I can take any recipe, whether it's healthy or not, and use this and not that to make it into a healthy recipe. Thank you for joining me today. I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.